Supplementary feeding, I'm, I'm going to talk about supplementary feeding and the potential for contaminating future honey crops. There is a bit of an issue, uh, has always been, that whatever you put into a beehive has the potential to uh, be found in honey crops that are extracted from those hives down the, down the track. It could be next week, next month or even six months from now when those hives are extracted. So the first time after the bees have been extracted after a supplementary feeding event, uh, you need to record in your records that you've paired either sugar syrup or some sort of pollen patty or other supplement to a hive on a certain date and make sure that the packers you're selling the honey to are aware of that so they can do any necessary tests and direct that honey in the markets that uh, can tolerate any potential residues from that feeding exercise. Now, supplementary feeding is becoming more and more mainstream in Australian beekeeping. There's some very good reasons for that. We need to build bees up in strength prior to honey flows that we know they're going to occur down the track. We also have to build bees up to uh, satisfy pollination standards for any pollination contracts that we might engage into. These contracts are legal binding contracts. We are obliged to supply the number of hives that are, we are contracted to supply by those dates. So supplementary feeding helps us overcome any drought in the field as far as nectar, shortages of nectar or shortages of pollen. Um, a side trip to that is that uh, while we're supplementary feeding to build bees up, we could also we may feed bees pollen supplement just to keep them alive. There is a number of uh, major flowering events in Australia that don't produce any pollen support in the, in the blossom for bees or bees that are attractive to, to the pollen. And in those situations, beekeepers have learnt to feed pollen supplements to the hives to maintain brood rearing in the hive. If the nectar stimulus continues with no pollen support in the field, and uh, no stored pollen in the hive or no supplementary pollen, the colony can literally breed itself to death where there's absolutely no bees left in the hive. So that's important if you want to work those type of honey flows. And mugger ironbark is a classic one in the eastern states. Then you need to be considering feeding supplements. Um, the other thing that bees historically have been fed for around the world is to overwinter. Um, there's no need for bees to be starving to death. Um, it happens from time to time. It's not a common occurrence, but it does happen. And having hives die from starvation is simply neglect from the point of view of beekeeper management. It doesn't have to happen. Supplementary feeding will overcome that issue. So uh, supplementary feeding is important for all of those, uh, is in that sort of um, space, if you like. I know of a couple of cases where uh, bees have obtained supplements in inverted brackets from piggeries or feed mills uh, where they go in and collect a protein powder in the form of pollard or uh, soy flour or something, bring that back into the hive. Uh, I know of other cases where bees have um, got into uh, factories to chase the, the waste sugar and that sort of stuff. So bees are very opportunistic and we'll also seek out materials that satisfy their nutrient requirements if there's nothing in the field other than what beekeepers supply them. So potential uh, contamination can occur for a range of reasons. Now, uh, now if we're going to feed, our different strategies are sugar feeding or protein feeding. Protein feeding is overcoming any shortage in the field as far as uh, pollen goes um, and the Sugar feeding is overcoming any nectar uh, shortages in the field, lack of, or any short, uh, maybe lack of stored honey in the hive. Um, if we're going to feed sugar, uh, dry sugar is probably the least stimulating, but the least likely to uh, cause any or lead to any contamination of C4 sugars or sucrose in the hive. So. If you want to just keep hives alive in a drought or going through winter, consider dry feeding uh, sugar. If you uh, want to or need to stimulate colonies, then a 50-50 mix is desirable, uh, feeding once or twice a week to continue that stimulus. Um, in that situation where you're only feeding a litre or two to a fairly strong hive of 30,000 bees plus, 
uh, once or twice a week. Again, the chances of contaminating the honey crop into the future is pretty minimal. The highest risk in relation to sugar feeding occurs when you're feeding uh, lots of sugar syrup in one feeding or one, one hit. Or you might feed four or five, six, ten litres of sugar syrup to the hive in one sitting the bees suck that in, they'll store a lot of that, and if they don't consume that before the next honey crop comes along, or honey flow or flowering event comes along and, and stores a honey crop over the top of it, you will potentially have some of that residue still in the hive when you get to your first extraction. So they're the decisions you need to make, but whatever you do, you need to record that feeding event in your records and notify the packers when you supply that honey that that honey is associated with that particular supplementary feeding event at a certain time. The protein is an interesting one in as much as there's a lot of different mixes and formulas around the place. Uh, they're all trying to replace the lack of pollen in the field, uh, primarily protein, but protein is made up of amino acids and the pollen also has fatty acids, vitamins and minerals in it, which are all add up to be incredibly important for brood rearing. Without them, you don't get baby bees, so you don't get replacements coming through and you don't have the queen performing at its peak. Um, any of those materials that you're feeding to a, a colony, be it soy flour or uh, pollen from another source, uh, have the potential to leave traces of that material in the hive. That can get in the honey, mind you, in incredibly microscopic proportions, but even so, if someone wished to go look for it, they may find it and then may doubt the authenticity based on the tests that are currently being used around the world to determine uh, the purity of the sugars in the honey. Um, it, more, it sort of in some ways shows the flaws in the current testing of uh, purity of honey around the planet presently, but even so it is a, a series of tests being used and therefore any supplementary feeding of protein should be recorded in your notes and again report it back to your packer. Now my preference for pollen feeding is to outside feed and let the bees fly to it. In that situation the bees are bringing it back into the entrance and more or less concentrating most of it in around the brood nest. If you put patties in a hive, which is still quite acceptable, uh, put them underneath the queen excluder, don't put them underneath the lid. The reason for that is if they've got a, the bees have got to crawl up through the super into the, the lid to get the pollen supplement and bring it back down into the hive, they're potentially sort of spreading some of that pollen supplement through the honey super and therefore the risk associated with uh, residues or some indication that there's something foreign in the honey and, uh, will be greater in that scenario. Uh, but I suppose the overriding issue for you as a beekeeper is to feed the most efficient way and the cheapest way possible to achieve your outcome. So whatever you put into a hive, um, wherever your bees are, you need to make notes and you need to report that information where there might be a risk for contaminating honey crops down the track back to your packer streams.